Hello ladies and gentlemen, Psycho Starcraft bringing you some games from WCS America Qualifiers Season 2 Minjul? Well, it's MC. Anyways, it is SKMC and Evil Geniuses Stefano. Now the dude... I have to check my current events. I know he was going to retire somewhere around now and I don't know if he's quite done it yet. But everybody's really excited to see him in this qualifier because there's not going to be a lot of games you can like cast up Stefano's anymore. And anywho, it is a Zerg versus Protoss. And MC's been kind of charging a little bit as of late. Obviously one of the most successful SC2 players of all time when it comes to actual earnings and some of the winnings he's had. But uh, the last little while he took a little bit of a a break is pushed a little bit further away. wasn't really at the top, considered one of those great, you know, talents in Protoss that we have right now, um, like Hero or First. But obviously, in this case, he is starting to do a little bit better and actually had some really, really great success as of late. The boss toss. I really want to see him put on a good show. And I'm actually gonna be speeding this up just so slightly. Forgive me for that, but this game was slightly longer. Stefano does love everybody that he plays against. And that makes it really nice. That's really funny. <laughs> yeah. Why not? It looks like we're going to have a gateway into expand here from our Protoss player before Cybernetic score, and that's perfectly fine. I think he wanted to be able to scout to see that that hatch is going down before he commits to throwing down that Nexus. If it was the other way around, he probably would have been a little bit more likely to throw down his Cybernetic score and move up into a Mothership core and so forth. Three in each gas as well. Very big commitment into the gas. You might see a very early Stargate or Robo facility come out for our Protoss player. Kind of surprised he hasn't been building down here at his wall. And we see Stefano is pretty comfortable. I'm going to slow it down so my computer doesn't blow up. To go up to three hatches there. His pool is finished and he is getting gas for towards speed. I'm sure he just wants to be able to get that really significant macro piece out. Lots and lots of links with speed to be able to keep him alive on the low tech. Stefano plays really entertaining games because he, he has these really great commitments into textiles such as his uh, swarm host play where I've seen him actually make almost no attacking units except making just defensive spine crawlers and spore crawlers the entire game until he can get out swarm hosts and even after that he might move into infestors and maybe even corruptors or something but it's just this really ballsy I'm gonna go for this kind of style the problem is against somebody like MC, who is known for this really great aggression, I don't think it's the wisest play. I think he would have to go down a little bit more defensive just to make sure that he can survive these kinds of plays here. Queen does not want to get stuck off of creep. He does have a few links on the way out now. And there's a stalker on the way. We don't really see what the tech choice is yet from our Protoss player. And I like the what he's doing this essentially to put the pressure onto his opponent so that it can't come back at him. He doesn't have a wall off, he doesn't have a big defense. So by being offensive like this, he's actually got a much higher probability of staying alive. Now speed's still a little ways off being finished, but these stalkers are going to just have to turn around and run home. He is going to start on a bit of a wall here, a bit of a desperation wall. He needs to get it up because once the speed finishes, then he can just run through all this. Hard to say if MC really anticipated doing a ton of damage with that push, but it did put out a whole bunch of lings instead of workers. There we go. So he's got a ton of larvae there and a lot of money. He needs to spend it. Probably going to run around now and look for said drones and pylons. Let's see if he's going to be aware enough. It does not look like that is the case. Speed is finished, so it would be worthwhile. This is such a common place. Like if you're playing against a Protoss, right over along this ridge, super common place to put down pylons. That's something that uh, you can keep in mind. I always scout here as a Zerg player. Scout along here, and then scout right in along here. 
That's generally the pods are going to come in for great run-ins. And this third base is usually the least defended spot. So if you can go and take care of those pylons, having those kind of zealot run-by attacks is far less likely to be successful. Pretty good sized gateway army. Lots and lots of sentries here. I think, yeah, we did have a star gate being produced. I think this is just what MC is going to use to move up into a third. Well, he's getting two cannons. I was going to say a third nexus. But getting down those cannons makes it seem to me like he wants to push out. And this is just him not wanting to get run over behind the fact. Did a pylon not get thrown down over here? Thought there was a probe. Must have got spotted or something. Who knows? Nope, there we go for that third base. Kind of a bit of a risk there. He could have lost a lot of links to do that. Just to delay that Nexus by 10, 15 seconds. Uh, links tempting fate a little bit. And they will get picked off. Roaches, plus one actually. He got started very early for Stefano. That's going to be done pretty quick. Speed, armor is a little bit further behind, but who cares? The one crawler, I think it's very worthwhile in case you get those early couple of zealot run buys. The Protoss player sees everything that's going on, all the timings. We actually have a void ray out as well. Yeah, more stargates. The three stargate build was massively popular back when uh, this tournament was happening. You saw like players like Alicia really, really popularize and perfect it. You get that third nexus down, and shortly after you can you you really have it on the way. You start pumping up those stargates. By the time they're ready to go, you have this sick economy on three bases that you can just pump out tons and tons of void rays if that's your choice and do a great work. Lots of sentry energy being used on scouts. But we can see that Stefano still just macroing up, getting out his tech. I don't think he knows yet about the Stargate play. No, he doesn't. He's actually scouted very little. He's not even running an Overlord. But he doesn't even have Overlords on that side of the map. Very strange. It'd be interesting to understand what's on his mind right now as this base goes down. What tech is my opponent going to do? Is he going to go for some sort of maybe two Robo Colossus? Is it going to be a heavy Stargate play? Is there going to be just mass gateways? You know, there's all these kinds of different options. And the Roach Hydra is probably the correct choice here with the Locusts and Swarm Hosts. It's... I think that will work out okay for him. As long as he can get out significant enough numbers to hold it off. Supply-wise, we can see they're both quite equal at this point. Not too sure what these Void Rays really want to accomplish. They should be able to get a cancel on this base, unless those Hydras are really, really paying attention. Yeah, he's shifting over that way with his Hydras. Cancels that base pretty easily. Drones do get away though, at least. Pretty gas intensive play from both players, and right now I know from uh, being a Zerg in this position, trying to keep up with the upgrades, producing Hydras, and getting in the Swarm Hosts, so hard to get out the numbers you need to to deal with this kind of Protoss army. So gas intensive. Good defenses at home, it's going to keep them alive against anything too cheeky. Still producing lots and lots of Hydras, understanding that that's going to be the important counterpoint. Probably didn't even need Swarm Host at this stage, with the kind of army he's going against. Probably could have just kept maxing out on Hydras for the time being. No Robotech on the way at all for his opponent. Looks like Void Ray production has stopped for the time being. Another big pile of gateways. Sell at leg speed. What are we up to now? Plus two. A little bit behind on his upgrades right now for the opponent. With the hive quite a long ways along for his opponent. 
I think they're just very happy to sit back and get every single tech path available. We have spores going down for defense, we have the Templar Archives on the way to get out storms and archons. MC is pretty comfortable with this Void Ray fleet to be able to just go towards that money composition. This Overlord will give Stefano a slight bit of un like leeway in seeing this attack coming. Uh, he's moving out across the map though unfortunately. Nope, his Hydras are still close enough at home. He did take this fight in probably the best place possible with the spores there to support as well. Would have been really nice to have an infestor lock that down. This is pretty cool play here from Stefano. Getting that forge would be pretty worthwhile. It's too bad the swarm hosts weren't putting the pressure on the front at the same time. Lots and lots of zealots in this composition. Leg speed's about to finish. Yes, I know my computer's slowing down. You don't have to tell me. He is pulling the uh, the army of the Protoss fairly out of position here, but unfortunately for him, his army is... Burrow your stuff. The army for the Zerg player is a little bit too split up everywhere right now. He's lost a lot of supply and is actually just in the process of trying to remake it. Those roaches weren't free. This is kind of funky. There isn't any detection besides these cannons. A little bit of bad pathing on that one foremost. Creep spread's pretty nice, but there's only a couple of active creep tumors in this composition here, so... One observer is going to be able to help clean that all out pretty fast as it moves across. We see the death ball push out here. Might have been expecting there to be a base on this side, but there is not yet. And we'll probably wait for an observer just to make sure the creep is in the right, is going to get taken care of as he runs across. Zero one zealots, the plus two was halted. That's going to give pretty good opportunity for Stefano here. He's got a massive upgrade lead over his opponent. SK cut a ton of upgrades in order to be able to get out this money composition. I don't think he has Storm yet, does he? Does he have Storm? Yeah, wow, he does. That should make this uh, rather challenging. Lots and lots of static D. I think that's very worthwhile to have. It just slows down armies a lot as they push across. The Observer does catch up to the army now. Zealots do a pretty good job against Hydras if they get right on top of them. If you have enough Hydras, obviously they just mow. Two-two on these swarm hosts is letting them cut through a lot of this units really fast. I don't think without Colossus that yeah, MC can really afford to keep pushing. He gave up over 30 supply on this push, and all he really accomplished was killing a bit of creep. And though that can't be discounted how important that is, uh, it wasn't too big of a deal. It did give him a great staging ground for this fourth base, though. He killed a creep on the side of the map he was expanding towards, and that's going to allow him to be a little bit more protected against any type of run buys. Plus two weapons finally about to wrap up. A 3-3 just finishes up now for the Zerg player. Who I think is being a little bit too defensive. I think he's still expecting a Protoss attack. And at this stage, I would like to see something decisive come out of Stefano. We see the double Spire going down. But by decisive, I'd say maybe getting some more bases. Finding some ways to attack with some Swarm Hosts. Because it's not necessarily to his advantage unless he's anticipating starving his opponent out to remain in this position. Eventually the Protoss always seems to find a way to trade cost effectively. Uh, particularly if you're going to send your swarm hosts in. That happens if you're trying to rally all of your swarm hosts down and one doesn't burrow in time. It's so annoying. Swarm hosts are so dumb sometimes. Mm, pardon me. So we've yet to see anything really, really 
immense happen at any stage to really give any indication of who's who's really in the lead at this point. I do like MC's position. I think that he's got the map control. I think he's got the really great economy on his four base happening. Ooh, Vipers too. I think as long as he doesn't take a really, really, really bad engagement, I think I think MC's going to do fine. What's going to be important for him is hit those really good feedbacks on all those Vipers. He's actually going to try to focus down that hatch. He's going to get pretty close. There are a lot of spines here. It will get cleaned up. Uh, but he does... If he does that one more time, he should be able to get it up, get it down. As a Zerg player, sometimes it's nice to get down another hatchery nearby, a macro hatch, so if it does die, this base isn't a complete waste for long distance mining. See, but this is just really, really slow push right now for Stefano. He's building up the bank. He's got to keep moving his creep. And we could, he's just going to waddle his way across the map. Get these really unbreakable positions behind his hydras and his swarm hosts, and I think like MC's okay with this until he gets up his upgrades. When his upgrades are finally maxed out, along with the rest of his units, then we're going to see him be a little bit more aggressive. Tempest as well. I think that's a really smart move. Getting those long distance attacking units. This is a bit risky for Stefano. You need those hydras to really supplement your, your army over here. I mean, the spores are going to keep them safe from anything in the air, but this is such an expensive ball of hydras. To lose it would be very unfortunate. And Stefano is picking away here, right? He can't discount the importance of that. He is getting this base up, which is really good because he is expanding in this direction. It's such a tense spot right now. I think that if, if for whatever reason, Stefano could get himself to this watchtower with his units and use that as his staging ground for his locusts, he will be in a fantastic spot. From there, he can essentially tack all the expansions of the Protoss player. Just chipping away. Still, the hallucinations getting cleaned up. We did see the speed for war prisons, I'm pretty sure. So I would have expected to see a couple of maneuverable plays. One of the, what I hear from a lot of pro players, as soon as you see a swarm house out, immediately get yourself a war prism to be able to start harassing around the map because it's so hard to defend with swarm hosts. They're just so immobile. Locusts need to swarm, they need to move, and you need to micro all this stuff. It's very difficult. Sure have been a great pickup to be able to get those there by Templars. Actually getting a little bit of shield damage off on these units. Hydras were interested in maybe darting forward, but that'd be pretty tough. I'd like to see these swarm hosts move up a little bit further, but the difficulty is if you get to this ridge and the, and he manages to force field down all of your locusts. He can really rain down terror with his tempests. So I think that's why we see this hesitation. Twelve gateways in production right now. That's one really important pylon. I don't think these hydras should push too far this way. I think that'd be very, very risky. When the locusts come up here, it might be in a bit of a better spot. He's got a ton of money. He's got a ton of excess larva. Just taking this for the gas, which is smart. Kind of a quasi base tradey thing going on over here. Stefano's putting a lot of faith in these uh, swarm hosts and locusts here. Unfortunately, didn't pull those void rays far enough. Great storms. Yikes, that's a lot of storms. And these zealots will probably help clean that up right afterwards. 
it's just a big problem with losing those hydras was how important they were to his ability to defend. Those archons will clean that army up now. Stefan will be making a ton of corruptors, a bunch of vipers, and more hydras. Oh, excuse me, I'm gonna sneeze, and that's gonna be terrible. Or all right, doing okay. Finally, it looks like he wants to push these locusts up a bit further, but this is a little bit of impatience, I feel. What the hell are you doing? No, Stefano, no. Once again, he tried to move the locusts and accidentally moved the swarm hosts. God, that's got to feel so crappy when that happens. That's going to lose him a ton of position here, potentially. He needs these vipers to come in and really either grab the void rays over or grab out some of these tempests. There's the void ray poles. Pretty good storms. Waiting for a recharge on the locusts here to push out. Did end up killing that fourth base. One Hydra just scouting around. I wonder with his minerals and his larvae, if he could make like, I don't know, 50 zerglings and just go for a big sick run by. Put the pressure on back at home. There's no recalls right now. Just come in and really start hitting the infrastructure. Just something to upset the Protoss player. Because the Protoss player has been so comfortable this game. There is an unbelievably sick amount of swarm hosts out here. You know, that's saying something. But I just think Stefano's... I don't think he knows exactly how to try to finish this game off right now. He's going to remake that base. Maybe even a drop, like just fill four overlords with zerglings and run them in if you think that there's going to be too much in the way. You know, just, just something. Getting some pretty good damage in all these cannons at least. Can't discount that, that is important. Once again, these swarmosts have to reroute and move over. Does have some investors out now. Pretty good work from these spine crawlers here. They are digging at these uh, archons. The archons aren't necessarily cheap. Still very valuable units. Wow, look at the storms on top of everything there. He is going to lose his Colossus pretty much. I think, I think Stefano did come out ahead in that, but not, that wasn't necessarily graceful from Stefano, but just, it worked though. What's his follow-up choice now? More Vipers. Pretty big gas bank right now for Stefano, which is very surprising. Big round of Stalkers coming in. Huge run of Stalkers. Looks like he really wants to try to jump on top of the swarm hosts. Use the blink and the full upgrades here to try to get in there and get the damage. I don't know if that's going to work out for him though. Big conga line. The difficulty right now is you see that MC is positioning himself for a really huge flank against these swarm hosts. I think Stefano might sniff that that's up right now. Pick up another Archon, you know, good little win. And just constantly doing damage. I think even just taking out this gas would be worthwhile and limiting that for a while. He doesn't know how spent the Protoss player is in resources. But in all honesty, he is quite beaten up there. Pretty big damage, those things are so loud. There's only a handful of Colossus in here, so Protoss units are going to take damage. It's so hard to blink micro uh, with all this junk happening. 
six high templars with storms available. That queen got just rolled. Tempests have plus three attack on them, so they are going to be doing pretty well. I know he doesn't have the upgrades for the Zerglings, I just think that because none of these bases really have a lot for defense, look at the oversaturation here. This could get off a lot of damage if you were to do a little bit of run buys just to make sure that the Protoss is off guard. And if you get Zerglings on top of the probes, they can't storm their own probes very effectively. Great prediction by Stefano, intercepts the Protoss player from being a little bit too maneuverable. One good thing MC has been able to do for a long period of this is keep the creep pretty much from going past halfway. It's kind of back to one of those situations where one really bad engagement is going to just cost somebody. But for whatever reason he loses a lot of these Tempests, toast. He can't afford to remake those. If all these swarm hosts go down at once, he's not going to be able to have the DPS come out fast enough to deal with it. Cancels the Nexus, doesn't actually get any shots off on him before then. Swarm hosts, oop, there's the oinks. Nice pulls by Stefano, managed to get quite a few of those Tempests. And he had to wait for the perfect timing when the Locusts were too far in the front for the, for the High Templars to squeeze past. He's actually down to just five now. Pretty aggressive blink forward there. Could get himself trapped up there if he's not careful. He's gonna have to use storms on Locusts, it's not ideal. He's only got so many storms to cast here and he might need those to deal with the Corruptors. Interesting. And I think what we're seeing here is just what great storms is what SKMC's been able to do a lot of this game is just get some damage in. Right? It always hasn't been the best damage. Uh, but he's been able to take out a base here and there or deny creep or pick off a few units. Stefano, on the other hand, he's never really been able to do he's been able to hurt the army. He's never really been able to turn around the action. A fungal would be very effective right now. This is where you gotta hit that fungal. Oh, if you would've got a fungal on all those stalkers, that'd have been so good. Slipped a small opportunity there. Another base on the way over here. Everything else is essentially mined out here. Stefano still sitting on a bit of a bank though. Which is going to help him out a lot. Particularly with gas. That's been something that's been super difficult the whole time for MC. Who is now trying to get out more Colossus. Kind of smart. He's moving a few of his swarm hosts a little bit closer in. That way he can pressure this base that is going up really wants to make sure that the, the his opponent doesn't get an advantage. You see he's immediately moving back into a defensive position as soon as those swarm hosts move over. He's actually going to get a handful of probes here too, which is oh, these. I'd have liked him to see him leave one swarm host here maybe. Wow, that's such an aggressive blink. He blinked essentially into the locusts. That was expensive for MC. I know what he was trying to do, but that wasn't the right time. He lost so much right there. So much that he can't rebuild. Now, Stefano has used up the rest of his bank though. He's actually just finally getting 3-3. Three, three. What the hell? Oh, it's for... Oh, no way. It's for his air army. It's for his corruptors. I didn't even realize that he was getting those upgrades the whole time. Because I'm a tool. 
big pile of zealots here. I mean, what else can you do? But that's most of the bank that's remaining here. Get the fungal. Get the fungal. Still lots of static defenses. Once again, all the swarm most have moved back over to the other side. The problem is these locusts are all about to expire. So this base might actually go down. And I think Stefano's okay to trade that. I mean, this base has got less to it. Um, but he doesn't want to give up this good of a position on this side. Actually going to be losing some Colossus here to Locusts. You never want to see that happen as a Protoss player. That's usually super avoidable. There's no more High Templars left in this army. I'm surprised he just didn't go for it maybe with his Corruptors there. There's not many Stalkers. He probably could have taken out all those expensive units and the game would have been much... Well, it would have been essentially over, I think, for the uh, Protoss player. Oh, it's over anyways. Wow. What a game. How did that... I guess he must have taken out all those those zealots there, but... Funky. That's so strange. Like, I don't know if Stefano could have gone into that game thinking, in his mind, you know what, I'm actually never really going to attack him. I'm just going to defend the whole game. Other than a couple of small swarm host pushes. That was really crazy. Anyways, long ass game one goes to Stefano. Game two between these two from the WCS brought to you by Seiko StarCraft. And we'll see you soon.